can become what you read. A young 16-year-old boy on the east side of Indianapolis, Indiana, had just finished reading a book of passion and easy uh, love and lust. Upon finishing reading the book, he steps out for the evening, the conquest of a young girl on his mind. That night, that young girl repels his advances the young boy, losing all sense of control, turns and brutally rapes the young girl, starting a lie of many rapes that were to follow. Yes, you can become what you read. And I believe the psalmist knew this and had this in mind when under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, he penned those words that we find here in the 119th Psalm and the 11th verse when these were, where these words are recorded, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. I believe the psalmist is sharing with those of his day three things. And I would like to share with those, uh, those three things with you today. The first of these three things I believe the psalmist is sharing with those round about him <coughs> is that the word is a great treasure and I believe the word that the psalmist had in mind here was the law of God, the ordinances of God. And I also believe the psalmist knew that he was not found right in the eyes of a righteous, all-loving God simply because he was able to keep those laws of God. I believe the psalmist knew that the purpose of the law was to point out sin in his life and the life of his contemporaries around him. Much more than the, just the law pointing out sin in his life, I believe that the psalmist knew that the word of God was revealing his forefathers to him. But much more than this, I believe the word of God that the psalmist was thinking about here was uh, saying to him, this is God revealing himself to mere man. God revealing how that he created the earth, how that he created man in his own image. And then there was a promise in there that the psalmist knew. That promise was that one day a Messiah would come, war that men were now involved in, suffering that men were now having to put up with, would all pass away one day because of the promise that was found in the word of God. One day war and suffering would no longer be a reality. Yes. To the psalmist, the word of God was a great treasure. With something that he placed such a great value upon, surely he would be searching for some place that he might uh, store this great treasure. And I believe the psalmist had already made up his mind where he would store this great treasure. Let me share you this with you, because the second thing he says, hid in my heart, and I believe that, is the best hiding place. Now, if you and I lived in the day of the psalmist, then we would be rather limited as to the areas where we would be able to store something of such great value. One of the places would be, would be in our homes where thieves could possibly break in and steal because we would not be able to remain at home all of the time. And this leaving a very grave possibility of a thief breaking in unless we had the money to hire someone to come and to protect that which we place a great value upon. Today, quite possibly, something that you and I place a great value upon, maybe we would take it down to the local bank where it would be insured by one of the agencies of our federal government or where maybe we might uh, uh, hire Lloyds of London, one of the great insurance companies, to ensure this that we place a great value upon, or maybe simply we would get the shield for it. Nevertheless, I propose to you the safest, the handiest place that this uh, value, this thing of value, the safest place, the handiest place that it could be stored is in the heart of an individual. Not only in the psalmist day, but in our day and time also. Because, you see, you and I face problems in our daily life. We look out and we realize that we have certain responsibilities. 
What is my responsibility toward my wife? What is my privilege and responsibility as a father to my children? What about uh, discipline? If my children disobey me, do I punish them? What about their spiritual education? Is this a part of my responsibility? What about money in my life and in the life of those individuals in whom God has called me to be the under-shepherd of? Yes, Dr. Pombo has shared with us throughout his uh, long ministry, one thing he has come to realize that has caused more split-ups and that eventually lead to divorce, and that is money in the life of individuals. He shared with us 95% of all those who are separated and eventually lead to divorce is brought about because of money. Quote Dr. Pomeroy, money makes a good slave. Yes, these are problems that you and I face in our daily lives, and I don't always have time to go down to the bank to find the answer. Therefore, the handiest and the, uh, the handiest and the best place to store this great treasure of God is within the heart of the individual. The third thing I believe the psalmist is sharing with those of his days, and that is still in effect for us today, is that uh, his reason, and that reason is that I might not sin against thee. The Word of God is a road map in our life. When as a young individual, before I knew Jesus and the free pardon of sin, the Word of God pointed out sin that was in my life. And sin that was in my life separated me from an all-loving God. And therefore, the Word of God was the sword that the Holy Spirit used to convict me of sin and of the need of a Savior in my life. And after I accepted Jesus as Lord and as Savior, it has helped me to overcome temptation that I face in my daily life. Whether that temptation be from within my own heart, the lust of my own heart, or whether it be brought about, by Satan himself, much as there after uh, in the fourth chapter of the book of Matthew, as we find Jesus after he has just been baptized by John the Baptist, and then the Bible records there that he uh, goes out into the wilderness there for some 40 days, and at the end of this period of time that Satan, knowing Jesus is very weak, comes to him and tempts the very Son of God. What does Jesus do three times as Satan tempts him? He quotes, it is written of him. Are you and I any less susceptible to the temptations of our own hearts, to the temptations that Satan right before us and Jesus my Savior? I believe another reason that you and I uh, do not study the Word of God and that it is sin in our lives is very simply, we want to remain ignorant. So, that God will not hold us at hand what we should be doing. We might say that we don't want to remain ignorant, but our actions by not reading, by not studying, by not meditating on the Word of God is saying in essence, I want to remain ignorant of the Word of God so that He will not require so much of me. Paul admonished the young preacher boy by the name of Timothy there, the pastor of a metropolitan church. Some words that I believe that you and I can apply in our situation today. There in 2 Timothy, the second chapter in the 15th verse are recorded these words, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now what Paul is saying here to Timothy is, he said, Timothy, you preach your certainties. How are you going to have certainties unless you get in to this great treasure of God's word? Preach your certainties. Yes, we like the psalmist need to daily read, study, meditate. In other words, bury this great treasure of God's word in our hearts that we not sin 